Behind every great sports team is a force greater than the athleticism, the force that drives every fan to his or her feet in the team's moment of utmost peril. We know their voices, and we know their message. They are the cheerleaders. Their statement is one of hope, and their spirit stands boldly behind the heart and soul of every athlete on the floor. The athletes and their game fill the seats, and the girls make sure you stay there, riveted to the game, hoping for victory down to the last buzzer of the last period. Their dedication and optimism are a testament, if nothing else, something we would do well to learn from in an era plagued by cynicism and doubt. Cheerleading is a treasure, a tribute to the perkiness of yesteryear that inspires us all. What began as one man's idea to stand in front of a crowd to cheer for the university sports team has since evolved into a dedicated practice in and of itself and has thus reached its own level of greatness. Cheerleading began in a pinch. The year was 1898 and the place was the University of Minnesota. It was the last game of the season and Johnny Campbell, a student watching the game, having heard some organized yells brought from Princeton University, addressed the stands and began to yell himself. His words rang out, Ra 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 Sky You Ma. The crowd took to it and repeated his chant, and with those phrases cheerleading as we know it was instantly born. He, together with his male compatriots, laid the foundations for modern cheerleading by creating what were called yell squads, groups of men that would yell to the crowd to keep their spirits up and pride high. Most students at this time were male, thus male cheerleading. Soon after, cheerleading spread to other colleges and universities. The position of yell leader, as it was called, quickly became a position that carried with it envy and prestige. In order to be a yell leader, one had to be elected there by his peers. By the 1920s, cheerleading was starting to become more of an organized practice. With a four-week course in crowd psychology and stunting appearing at Purdue University, which was followed shortly thereafter by the publishing of a text called Just Yells, the first instructional book on the subject. It wasn't until this time that co-ed cheering squads began to appear on the scene. Spectators soon came to believe in the superiority of girls at the practice, citing a better sense of rhythm and better overall appearance. Pompons, however, didn't enter into the picture until some time in the 1930s. However, cheerleading didn't start becoming a female-dominated practice until some time in the 1940s as young men were being shipped off to fight in World War II. Skirts and paper palms dominated as choreography began to get more and more elaborate, calling to the attention of one Lawrence Herky Herkimer a former cheerleader himself who created the National Cheerleading Association as a means of holding several training camps to better educate young women in the art of cheering. Through these short clinics, cheerleading was able to achieve a new level of excellence at the start of the 1950s as more training and supplies became available than ever before. Pompons, pleated skirts and spirit sticks became standard equipment. Things remained relatively unchanged until the 1960s when fragile cray paper palms were replaced with vinyl ones, allowing for the creation of a completely different style of palm movement and cheering. Professional athletic teams also noticed a difference at this time, and professional cheerleading squads entered the scene. In the early 1970s, the Dallas Cowboys, tired of hiring mediocre high school girls to do their dirty work, decided to create their own exclusive cheering squad, setting a precedent that would later be followed by other teams. During this time, competitive cheerleading also began to rise to its own great heights. For the first time in nearly 30 years, co-ed squads began to dominate as routines started requiring more elaborate and complicated stunts. Cheerleading had become its own sport, affirmed by the later advent of all-star teams, the best of the best. Cheerleading was serious business.